Good, e <clears throat> Good evening and welcome everyone. I'm Brian Chute of Anita and the Man. As we've come to you live with all of our networks now checking in with us to over 200 confirmed countries that we bring these broadcasts to you live right here at 6 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m., and occasional 5, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time broadcast right here from our offices at of MCM Ministries Morningstar Communications Network at Los Angeles, California. We thank you, O Lord, for this time. We thank you, O Lord, for the strength you have given us. We thank you, O Lord, for all the clarity of our lives and minds and hearts that you have given to us and guide us with. And thank you for all and all to us our, with, our, with our time and for our time. In the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Brethren, we're going to ask you to grab your Bibles as... Anita grabs hers, and we're going into the last chapter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for all that you've brought to our edification of our new breath in God and Jesus Christ. Revelation 22. We've covered briefly last night, 1 through 5, basically on the topic of our new home. And basically we threw, we had the... Uh, eviction notices, the, the sinner's day of court, everyone else has been thrown into thrown into the lake of fire. Now, we come, brethren, with a lot of questions. So, we have 1 through 22 already on YouTube for you. We've got uh, these available for you on DVDs for you, for your um, tithes and offerings. We will send these to you. But Monday, so tonight we conclude our lesson, but Monday we're going to go through a very review and then move on to wherever the Lord wants to lead us. So, got our fingers in Revelation 22. <clears throat> got a clean sheet of paper. Let's rock and roll and let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time. The endless realm of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow. For many called, a few are chosen. We thank you for the clarity of our minds, our hearts, how you pierced our hearts with a new heart by re removing the old stony edges of the old heart. And how you bless us with a new new heart as you gaze down upon us and from from the cross of Calvary and baptize us with your blood of Calvary. We thank you for this love that you provided for us, all instruments of truth, all coming to us. For in the master's name of Jesus, eternity is our breath. Eternity, we move into your eternity, O God, and dismiss all wickedness, all insecurities, all away from our lives. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, so let's get right into 22. <clears throat> and again, and then I'm going to go 1 through 5 again, but we did, we, we, did, we did cover that last night. So, verse 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as a crystal, proceeding out to the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on the either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manna of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no, no night there, there shall be no need of candle, nor the light of the sun, for the Lord giveth, giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. Verse 6, And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of, of this book. And I, John, again we're in Revelation 22, now I'm reading from verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them and when I heard, had, had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. 
and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and they may have right to the tree of life, may enter through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to, angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And my wife just gave me a reminder. We'll get right to that. And the spirit of the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of these prophecies of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of this word. So Jesus is coming quickly. Again, you are not like Jericho. You perhaps, you've had enough years of your life, so we're not going to say the end of the world is coming in 40 years, but Jericho had 40 years to repent and turn itself over to God. We've covered a lot, a lot of territory in the book of Revelation. We've certainly added a lot of depth to our new hearts, that deeper well. We have traveled through the history of the early churches all the way to, into the eternity. We arrived at the back toward the book of the Bible, but it, it is here that we receive a trio of final things. Let's look at some of these verses tonight as we have concluded the, our teaching of the book of Revelation. The faithful word of God, the accuracy of the word. The Bible is an accurate book, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh Jesus. All streams of earthly comfort are muddy as one through five is expressing to us. But these are clear and refreshing. They give life and preserve life. To those who drink of them, thus they will flow forevermore. These point to the quickening and sanctifying influences of the Holy Spirit. As given to sinners through Christ, the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son applies this salvation to our souls by His new creating love and power. The trees of life are fed by the pure waters of the river that comes from the throne of God. The presence of God in heaven is the health and happiness of the saints. The tree was an emblem of Christ and of all the blessings of his salvation. And the leaves of the healing of the nations mean that his favor and presence supply all good to the inhabitants of that blessed world. The devil has no power there. He cannot draw the saints from serving God, nor can he disturb them in the service of God. God and the Lamb are here spoken of as one. Service there shall be not only freedom, but honor and dominion. There will be no night, no affliction, no or dejection, no pause in service or enjoyment, no, diver no diversions or, or pleasures of man's inventing will there be wanted. How different all this from gross and mere human views of heavenly happiness even those which refer to pleasures of the mind. In 6 through 19, we have expressed the Lord Jesus spake by the angel, solemnly confirming the contents of this book, particularly of the last vision. He is the Lord God, faithful and true. All by his messengers, the holy angels showed them to holy men of God. They are things that shortly must shortly be done. 
Christ will come quickly and put all things out of doubt. And by the integrity of the angel who had been the apostle's interpreter, he refused to accept religious worship from John and reproved him for offering it. The presence, this presents another testimony against idolatrous worship of saints and angels. God recalls everyone to witness to the declaration here made. This book, thus kept open, will have an effect upon men. The filthy and unjust will be, will be, will, will be more so. But, it'll be, but it will confirm, strengthen, and further sanctify those who are upright with God. Nevertheless, let us think that a dead or disobedient faith will save us for the first and the last has declared that those alone are blessed who do his commandments. It is a book that shuts out from heaven and all wicked and unrighteous persons, particularly those who love and make lies, therefore cannot itself be a lie. There is no middle place or condition. Jesus, who is a spirit of prophecy, has given his churches this morning light of prophecy to assure them of the light of the perfect day approaching. All is confirmed by an open and general invitation to mankind to come and partake freely of the promises of the privileges of the gospel, the spirit by the sacred word, and by convictions and influences in the sinner's conscience. It says, come to Christ for salvation, and the bride or the whole church and earth and in heaven come and share our happiness lest any should hesitate it is added let whoever let whosoever will or is willing come and take of the water of life freely may everyone who hears uh, or reads these words desire at once to accept the gracious invitation all who are condemned who share who should dare to corrupt or change the word of god either by adding to it or by taking to it. <clears throat> the accessibility of this part of the Bible, or all parts of the Bible, this is not a closed book. It is open to all who are led by the Spirit. It's final authority of all faith and practice in the house of God and the lives of all of God's children. Just because it is open, though, it does not mean that it's open to any type of alteration. The finished work of Christ, it settles what we are. Jesus is a great divider. Where man stands in regard to Jesus determines his condition here and hereafter. The time is now. There may not be here, hereafter. Pray through over 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. It settles where we are. Each judged by his work. Some will be in Jesus. They will be in glory with him. Some will be outside of Jesus, those who are lost, and will be lost forever. The greatest agony of hell will be the knowledge that it didn't have to end this way. The rich man's agony was made worse because of, of the bliss of Lazarus. It settles who we are. We are his, the great lover of the church. It ought to be a, a joy to all your heart to know that you belong to Jesus. Brethren, God brings us to the depth of his love, to the depth of all despair, walking away, moving into a strong relationship with God. We are the branches, Jesus is the vine. We are rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have seen, as you have been not abiding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. For knowledge to become vision and for the soul to grow, the soul must be rooted in God. So, how did Anita and I become rooted? One day in our lives, we felt a nudge. Nudge wasn't off to get high wrote some doobies, was a nudge to come forward in Christ. In Christ. Now, brethren, tonight's your night. I'm saying, sharing this to all the sinners who don't know Christ and to those who want to be recommitted with Christ. This is your time. Romans 10, 13 sings loud to you tonight. But whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Every knee shall bow. 
every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, is God, dear God. <clears throat> Brethren, repeat this after me. If you don't know Christ, you want to re be recommitted with Christ, I admit I am a sinner, dear God. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am praising your name. Most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before, before, before the throne of God. Before the throne of God. It doesn't get any better than that, brethren, when you have God's own angels singing your name before the throne of God. We come, brethren. come and just a reminder of what my wife sent me during the service is that I've had many people feel that Morningstar is Satan we named I'm named this ministry before my wife and I were ever reconnected and it's Morningstar Communications Network MCN Ministries this was birth from God but also birth from a company that Melissa and my myself made, created as an entertainment company, when God brought us together, when, when Melissa went home and our eldest went home, we brought this, God had me turn this into his ministry, a 501c certified church here in the United States, and to those who have accused me of naming my own ministry, God's ministry after Satan, just pretty much for Jesus has called us all to talk Jesus called us all and for those who claim to be ministers your days will be shut up shut down your words will come back at you your sins shall be exposed in Jesus name and also brethren we just started segment of our program called you, you, Your Turn, where you can send us your prayer request, and at Brian, just go to briantooth.com slash prayer request, and another brother from India is, is excited about our coming there in the end of the year, and he's naming his auxiliary, Help for the Hopeless and Hope for the Helpless, regarding street evangelizing, I am seeking fishing partners to come and join uh, Pastor Bryant and Nita Hewitt, MCM Ministry family, to evangelize in this part of India, the southeastern part, to film ministry showing un unreached tribes, people among in, in, in India, singing songs, share testimonies, distribution of tracts, praying for sick people, cottage prayer meetings, open air preaching. If you are interested, please join us with, please join us, us or and bring your brothers and sisters in our area with Brother Bryant and Anita Hewitt. Please contact the MCM Ministries through the contact link. Thank, thanks and God bless. And they're looking for, um, they're gonna be building an orphanage that will be helping them out with children education and food for the needy. And uh, they are asking for a small offering of $200 a month from anyone, so let's just make that $200 a month blossom into $2,000 a month. And uh, if you want to be a financial partner with us, again, we are 501c certified church here in the United States. You can uh, send your donation link over the website or right to our physical address here in Los Angeles, California. Again, you Malachi says the windows of heaven will, will open up with you, and your storehouse and your storehouses won't, won't have room enough to keep them. So. We are a fruitful ministry, and your return on investment, if that's what you need to be here, here, shall come back to how big as you want it. Just ask in your heart, and you shall receive it, and believe in your heart that you shall receive it, and back up your offering.
for the offering of obedience to back up your faith with a blessed task of works. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> we come to you, our brethren, and feeling we must trust God's words. These words are faithful and true. God says to us in 6 and 7, And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to sue unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Faithful and true. Revelation is faithful and true. Because Jesus Christ himself is faithful and true. Since Jesus never goes back on his word, we can believe the words of Revelation. God's promise always depends on God's character. John goes on record, and the Lord the God of the Spirit, the Spirit, the heart of inner being, of the prophets, sent his angels to show to his bound servants the things which must soon take place. The statement reinforces a futuristic interpretation of Revelation. The book deals with events yet future. It also indicates that God intends the reader to understand this book. It is Revelation, not an incomprehensible mystery. Even though much of the revelation is symbolic and difficult to understand, it is ironic that people have neglected to and avoided the, this book, even though it contains more promises of blessing than any other book in the Bible. All of us should continue to study it long after this sermon series is over. Expect Christ's return. Verse 7. And behold, I come quickly. This is the first of three times that Jesus declares, I come quickly. The promise is preceded by the word, Behold, Behold. In a term intended to grab our attention, Jesus is saying, Give this your undivided attention. 2220. Jesus uses the word yes to convey solemn assurance. The word translated yes serves as an explanation point of assurance. By saying this, behold, and yes, Jesus intends to do two things. Arouse the attention of all Christians to the fact that he is coming could happen at any moment. And gives believers solemn assurance of the fulfillments of his promise of his imminent return. And behold, I come quickly. Behold, Christ comes quickly. The key word, the word translated quickly means once at once or suddenly. The point is that our Lord is coming, and when he comes, he is coming suddenly. Without warning, as a thief who comes without announcement, these words of our Lord are in the present tense, not in the future tense. Jesus is saying, I am coming now, not I am coming later. There must be a sense of urgency. The sense of urgency must urge us to rise above the crisis. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back today, quick back today, quickly, eminently, shortly, it will decisively mark the way we live our lives. So, brethren, we need to leave Sy the Syria, the Persian Gulf, the Africa, the Egypts, Northern Africa, the revelation of the hedge funds that are trying to destroy the European Union, the Greek, the Greek, the Greece, Spain, Portugal, California. We must have the expose of having people believe that Jesus Christ is here to bring each of them salvation, yet they want to have their own righteousness, they want to have their own salvation, but being stuck in their own self-gain. What you, you don't realize, brethren, is where God has a plan, He has great provisions for you. Yet, brethren, if you choose to have the lifestyle of the ways of men for your own gains, you're going to end up in the lake of fire, burned for eternity. That's the second death, brethren. Being rose from a thousand years sleep to feel knowing that, hey, by the way, you're being sent to the lake of fire. Come on now. God did not create you to destroy you. God created you so you could share this and live this. Matthew 6, 13, Thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. Brethren, this is all for you. This is for the love of the Christ that we have. Bringing all and all 
to those who wish and to understand. In verse 18 and 19, just to go over this one more time, the last warning, man is not to tamper with the word of God. The book opens with a blessing to all who read it, hear it, and keep it. It closes with the condemnation of those who take it upon themselves to change God's word. Men can do as they please, but they cannot change the word of God. Read and pray through Psalms 119, verse 89. Those who will try will pay a heavy price. The last word. The word from the Savior. His last word is to remind us that He is coming. This gives us great hope. It, is, it also gives us reason to purify our lives before Him. It gives us reason to purify our lives before Christ. We come, brethren. We come. We're feeling God's love, His truth, this time. He feels us and wants us to have us and to watch us and to be with us. John, 1 John chapter 3, 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every for, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Even as he is pure. Brethren, in the, in the last few verses that we read, after discovering these things to his people on earth, Christ seems to take leave of them and return to heaven. But he assures them it shall not be long after before he comes again. While we were busy in the duties of our different stations of life, Whatever labors may try us, whatever difficulties may surround us, whatever sor sorrows may press us down, let us with pleasure hear our Lord proclaiming, Behold, I come quickly. I come to put an end to the labor and suffering of my servants. I come in reward. I come and my reward of grace is with me to recompense with royal bounty every work of faith and labor of love. I come to receive my faithful, preserving people to myself to dwell forever in that blissful world. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, a blessing closes the whole. By the grace of Christ, we must be kept in joyful expectation of His glory, fitted for it, and preserved to it. And His glorious appearance will be joyful to those who partake of His grace and favor here. Let all add, Amen. Let us all earnestly thirst after greater measures of gracious influences of the blessed Jesus in our souls and his gracious presence with us. So glory has made perfect his grace toward us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and never shall be world without end. Amen. Brethren, that concludes our series of revelations. We are going to have a review on Monday. I ask you to get quiet as we sign off, feel God's truth, God's love. These words are faithful and true. And as Jesus has just said to us, and behold, I am coming quickly. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time. Your endless frame of your love that brings us to your road of graces, brings us to your straight and narrow. Or many called if you are chosen. We thank you for this world of love, baptized by the blood of Calvary. How you've healed us with the living word of God. How you've given us all the promises and the prophecies in this one book that we just expressed. We lift up this evening, God, upon North America and the AM hours throughout the world. 
to guide us and to bless us and teach us how to lift up our repairs and our repentance and our prayers. And after we lifted up our repentance and prayers, we, cry, we lift up a song to you saying, Lord, I want to know you ever so more, every day better than I knew you yesterday. And then we ask for the wisdom and discernment. We ask for you the hand of your guidance to walk us over that river of change to the everlasting arms of Christ to bring us to your time frame right now for in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, again, that concludes our broadcast for this evening. And right, good morning wherever you are in the world. We thank you for your time. Until next time, do stay tuned for, and to all of our news and information about our crusades at bryantjewett.com, bryantjewett.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day.